All right, welcome into a very special Thanksgiving edition of the Press Box Zoom. I'm Troy D. alongside uh, my buddy Cliff Brock. We're, we're sharing a screen. We've got some technical difficulties in the other room, so Cliff will join me here. Uh, also, as always, Brian Bailey from uh, location unknown right now. Where you at, B? We're out running errands. Bella, say hey. Hey. Hey, Bella. Good to see you. Happy holidays, or Thanksgiving, hey. anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, we might have we might go to you more than bailey so be ready you probably oh, have oh no. oh no you probably have more interesting things to say all right uh also join us billy weaver from channel seven in his man cave it looks like good to see you Weaver. good to see you guys happy thanksgiving and uh, brian meador from michigan control over at ecu good to see you and a uh, great looking shirt meador. yeah buddy of mine gave this to me what's yeah yeah there you go weaver, great looking shirt weave hey hey you cliff Hey, just, yeah. just to say, this is actually one of my favorite shirts. This thing is awesome. Comfortable. It fits so well. Yeah. It's very comfortable. So got, from got, now on, whatever shirt you guys get, whatever this company this or it. this material, thumbs up. Duly noted. I'm going to write that down and make sure you only get sport fit shirts. We've. Hey, yeah, that's, I guess that's what it is. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, all right, before we get started on football, it is Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, let's, favorite sides, I'm curious, Bailey, if you can only have one side this Thanksgiving, what is it? Well, I won't, I won't get it this Thanksgiving because my mom's not coming down, but my mom makes dressing that I really like for Thanksgiving. We only get it once a year, and so she usually makes it, but uh, it won't, won't be happening this Thanksgiving. Is, it, is dressing different from stuffing? I don't know. I've seen the debate. I, I just know it's her dressing, so I, I like that. All right. Fair enough. Cliff, what do you want? My grandmother's dressing, and it is dressing. What? And it's different than stuff. All right. I'm going to disagree with you guys, but agree with you at the same time. If I can only pick one, I'm going stuffing, and I'm going stovetop stuffing. I love it. <laughs> stovetop <laughs> stuffing? I don't care what your grandma's make. Stovetop yeah. stuffing is awesome. And I'm serious. I'll eat it year-round. It's so, and, and when you do Italian night, you have spaghettios and meatballs, right? Chef <laughs> Boyardee. <laughs> no, that's a step up, man. I'm telling you, for a commercially made product, stove top stuffing is amazing, and it's easy to make. All right, uh, Weave, what are you eating? This Zoom room brought to you by Stove Top Stuffing. Um, I'm going mashed potatoes and gravy, but I got to disagree with you guys on the dressing stuffing thing because it doesn't matter if it's dressing or stuffing. When you jam it in the turkey butt, it automatically becomes stuffing. stuffing. Yeah. Correct. Well, yeah. that's it. That's if you jam it's it in there. But... <laughs> yeah. Because well, in, I, that, in that case, I've never had stuffing. Had <laughs> yeah. 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 Weaver, I guess so. Uh, me or what about you? I'm with Weaver. My, my mother in law makes the best mashed potatoes and gravy, mm. and it handmade, and she puts other stuff yes. in it. Oh, yes. it's so good. So good. Yes. Right, yes, Bella, and I pour gravy over the entire plate. Ooh, it's going over yes, everything. Sir. What do you like, Bella, to eat for Thanksgiving? Oh, Bella, what, what's your favorite Thanksgiving? My favorite Thanksgiving is mashed potatoes and gravy. Mashed potatoes yes. and gravy? Yes. Oh, good. Oh. good. You get it. So mashed Brian Bailey doesn't gravy, like gravy, yes. though. Yeah, I don't like gravy. Bailey doesn't like gravy. Uh, you like plain. Ridiculous. I like a plain, yeah. Bailey don't plain. like gravy. Plain. Yeah. You got plain. It is. That is the big, yeah, that's the biggest shocker of the world. How frankly, this failing does not make like shocked and stunned to learning this information today. <laughs> What's next? He doesn't like biscuits? Well, he's not a Bubba anymore, but he, I mean, what Bubba do you know that doesn't like gravy? I mean, yeah. I'm still a Bubba. I like, no. well, I like being a Bubba. All right, well, <laughs> Thanksgiving weekend is here. Hopefully, and in the look, we're all day by day with this thing, so hopefully this game's going to be played Saturday. We Let's not jump to any conclusions. You never know what could happen. We've already had some conference games postponed this week. Um, before we talk ECU, SMU, I don't know what happened, guys. Last week we got off track. We missed last week. We always do our game day predictions. Our last predictions were for the Cincinnati game. So we didn't get to do a prediction for Temple. We probably would have all got that right anyway. Uh, we all predicted Cincinnati to win by a decent margin, except me or he thought ECU would pull the uh, upset off. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, out of all the I, I clearly told you to take 30 points off of that one side, one square on the sides. You, you do the math on that, how close I was. Uh, Bailey had you can't do math. 45-20. You have to do math. It's easy. I know. Cliff had 42-17, and Troy D had 56-14. Final score, 55-17. Just want to recognize that uh, 
I was the winner that week. And I know how much you guys like to recognize me, give me credit. And uh, okay. <laughs> they get clip. <laughs> yeah. He, he's the one that wanted to do that. Wake said, up, Cliff. I'm not coming in unless you make sure everyone knows you got the score closest. All right. Why don't you take take that paper and stuff that turkey with it right up its butt? Hey, Cliff. Cliff. Cliff, you're not the only one with a jackass in the shot with you. I got one right here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right there. All right. That's good. Let's move on to this weekend. ECU, SMU. Hey. My, I got a bunch of turkeys on this call right here, so we're all good. <laughs> Woo! Um, gobble, gobble. ECU, SMU, noon kickoff. Our coverage starts at 8 a.m. here on Pirate Radio. Uh, last year, the Pirates almost put off the huge upset on the road, 59-51. They, SMU was the 23rd-ranked team at the time. We've seen East Carolina, you know, compete with good teams before and kind of surprise, almost should have knocked off Tulsa. Uh, what do you think is going to happen this weekend, Bay? Well, you know, you look at this game, and, and if the Pirate offense were playing better, I'd really think they'd have a chance to pull the upset. But I, I just wonder you know, what happened from last year. Last year against SMU, and I'm sure Weaver went back and looked at some of the tape, too, doing stories this week. But, man, they just threw it all over the place. Yeah. They were so yeah. good offensively last year against SMU. And if they can somehow – and they're, they've got a better running game this year than they had last year, but they just can't find – they just haven't gotten that offense clicking right now. So, if, for my score, I'm going to go – I'm going to go SMU 35, East Carolina 21. I think it's going to be a good game for the first half, and I think SMU's just got so many weapons. I'd like to see East Carolina win. I think if they could crank it up offensively, you know, that would give these guys a lot of confidence going into the offseason, give us all, you know, some enthusiasm as we get ready, especially for those guys getting ready to, to – they, they get, what, a month break before they come back, even a six-week break before they come back and start winter conditioning, and then they go into spring drills, and hopefully all of that will be closer – to normal than it was last year. But uh, I think SMU beats them this week. All right, Bailey says 35-21. Weaver, what do you think? Well, I agree with Bailey that they, they're going to need to get this offense um, in gear if they have any shot of, of trying to upset SMU. And, yeah, I was looking back at some of the tape from last year, and Tyler Sneed had a big game. And the one yes, thing you can – the one thing you can definitely count on is, first of all, Tyler Sneed had a great game against SMU last year. He's coming off a great game against Temple where he uh, is the special teams player of the week. So you know SMU is going to lock down on him. So that means somebody else on that offense has got to step up. CJ, he's got he's to come with his game. Uh, you know, CJ is going to have to come correct. Um, Audio, uh, 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 Audio Matosho, those guys, they're just they are just going to have to play better offensively because I think SMU is going to lock down on Tyler Sneed. With that being said, I think SMU is going to score some points. 42-28 is my prediction, and I think East Carolina scores their final touchdown within the last minute or two of the game to make it a little bit closer. All right. Uh, Midor. That's pretty specific. I, you know, you look at last week and, and the way the Temple game went down, I think, you know, we've heard false positive all year long when it, when it comes to the virus. I think that game was a false positive in that um, ECU looked really good against a team that quit. Their coach quit. The team quit. Um, they've already quit uh, the Cincinnati game. They're not even playing that game this weekend. So I don't, I don't think you can look at the Temple game as saying that East Carolina is in the, in the right direction necessarily. A win's a win's always a good thing to get a win, especially on the road. But um, I don't think it's going to be the shootout we saw last year. I just don't – I agree with Bailey. I don't see the, uh, the offense uh, lining it up like that. I do think it's going to be closer than those guys think. I'm going to go a 30-23 uh, SMU. All right. And uh, Cliff? Uh, I, I like the road team in this one. I do think it will be close. I'll take Washington 23. <laughs> <laughs> you know that locked and loaded since we started. 23-21 <laughs> Washington. My prediction this week. All right. What about ECU SMU? I don't have a favorite. Oh, yeah. See that? See that? I don't recognize that logo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a season of false positives for those two NFL teams. That's not, that's, a, I mean, you're, you're in first place with four wins. I was to be five <laughs> wins after this week, right? Yeah. <laughs> He has some toys there, huh, Weaver? Yeah. <laughs> Why do I imagine he does this during yeah. the day when we're not on Zoom? That's what he does. This is a little peek behind the curtain of what goes on at Billy's house when he's not at the well, Trust me, there's a lot more crazy things than that guy. Hey, I got plenty of stuff. <laughs> 
plenty of stuff. Right. We, we don't want to see the adult toys. <laughs> I'm going uh, ECU, S, uh, SMU over ECU 4821. Book it. All right. Uh, before we get out of here, guys, basketball season is upon us, or is it? What is your prediction very quickly for basketball? My prediction is it'll be a complete cluster F. I think you've already seen that. We'll be lucky to get games in. I think it's going to be way worse than it was for football season. Uh, I think it's going to be a disaster how basketball, as far as not the games themselves, just the season, how disjointed it's going to be. Uh, Bailey, what do you think? Well, I think that's a very optimistic approach there, Troy. Um, I'm optimistic as always. I think it's going to be worse than football, obviously, because you don't have as many players on the team. And if you do get a virus and you got all the contact tracing, but I think they'll they'll do a good job of trying to get as many games in as they possibly can. I know the East Carolina is looking right now actively trying to find some other games, and you know hopefully they'll get the conference thing worked out. I'm excited that the ACC tournament is coming back to Greensboro. I mean that's big for our state, and uh, I don't know if we'll, any of us will get to go see it, but at least uh, it's in our state. So. <laughs> All right, we basketball. Your expectations? Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not very optimistic about basketball, just for the fact that you know when you start talking about a virus and you're talking about an indoor sport, all it takes is one false positive or one positive or one contract tracing. And then everybody is infected or potentially infected. And that's when you start to get into, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with an outdoor sport, it's a little bit different with basketball being inside an arena, uh, just doesn't look good. So I think you'll see more cancellations for basketball than you did with uh, football this year. And we've seen a lot of those cancellations yeah. and postponements. Yeah, and, and, and before it was like week to week, and then it kind of became day to day. And then yeah. as we saw last week in Philadelphia, it was hour to minute hour. Minute to minute, yeah. Minute, minute to minute, minute, man. And so, I mean, that's that's what you're going to see more of. I mean, especially, you know, with basketball being, you know, it's unpredictable, yes, but you're inside. It's You got more, you got a little bit more sensitivity when it comes to those, to those yeah. test results and the contact tracing. And, you know, you, you got body to body contact. You have that in football as well but you still have helmets and shoulder pads and all that stuff. I think there's more, you know, for lack of better word, not Don't say spit. Gross. Don't say spit. No, but I'm, I'm talking about sweat. I mean, the guys sweat on each other, man. I mean, that's, that's as close to contact as you're going to get in football. I mean, I mean, in basketball, you get that in football as well. But like I said, you're a little bit more contained, so to speak. In basketball, I mean, it's body-to-body -body contact. Well, so I discipline. think you got to be a lot more careful. They're going to have to be disciplined. You can't be going yeah. to parties, and you know, they're, they're going to have to stay and that's, the that, that's hard for 18 to 22-year-old guys. It yeah. really is. Flip your basketball guy, your thoughts going into the season. I'll be positive. We might have Jane Gardner here like seven years. If we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was really bad. So, yes. if we do return to the court, we're actually going to have a better team than ever that might be. Guys, uh, enjoyed it as always. Thank you for being here. Hope you and your family have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we'll uh, have to get reconnected after football season, maybe hook up next week. Damn. 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 <laughs> and don't forget the Bears Sunday Night Football against the Packers. Go Cowboys, Clip. Hey, go Redskins. <clears throat> See you guys. Later, buddy. See you guys.